Good morning, everyone. I'm love to see in the chat where folks are calling in from. Great to see you all here. Um, and officially, welcome to check it out. It's always exciting to have one of these. It's kind of a highlight of the month for me, for sure. Are you guys seeing my slides? And we not see the slides. Go ahead and take it away. Thanks so much, Janae, for being with us this morning. Awesome. Thank you, Sam. And thank you, everyone. Good morning to you. Welcome to Chuck. Check it out. We have a lot of books on tap today, so we are going to get started. And our plan this morning is we have one story time standout. And what do I mean by story time standout? Story time standouts are those books that you can use for story time. They are just perfect, craving for a story time. So we'll talk about our story time standout for this month. We'll cover second and third grade chapter books. We'll cover early readers, picture books and board book and one board book roundup, uh, teen fiction, middle grade, children and teen nonfiction. I also included a holiday book roundup because you know Christmas is around the corner and there are a ton of really good Christmas holiday books. So I wanted to get those on your radar. Graphic novels and manga, what I'm reading and upcoming events and giveaways. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Janae Jackson Doring. I'm the Youth Services Consultant for the State Library of Iowa. Um, if you notice, those pictures are not of me as present. Those are pictures of me as a teenager. Um, this month we had a Teen Tober webinar, and Sam, Samantha was shocked that I did not put any pictures of myself as a teen in the Teen Tober webinar. So I told her that I would share pictures of me as a teen. So yes, there's a picture of me in my Letterman jacket, and there's a picture of me when I won Queen for uh, Morp, it's opposite of prom, uh, the Morp dance. So that is yes, Sam, yours truly was a teenager. Um, but if you need to reach out to me for anything, teen programming, uh, collection development, story times, just any youth related concerns or questions, there's my contact info on the right side. Feel free to contact me. I love coming out to visit and I love to bring books with me. So please contact me for any youth related questions or concerns. All right, let's get started. I told you we have one story time standout today, and that is, drum roll please, my friend the pigeon. Who can go wrong with the pigeon? I am a big fan of pigeon, and Mo Willems has moved to the Christmas uh, book, book roundup for Chris for the holiday season. This one is called Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Sleigh. It is written and illustrated by your friend, your pal, Mo Willems. And in, this is gonna be an instant classic. Um, the pigeon wants to drive the sleigh. In the spread, in the opening spread, he, he dreams of driving Santa's sleigh. And Santa has to step away like the bus driver. Santa leaves his sleigh and he asks the kids, don't let the pigeon drive the sleigh but you know that pigeon wants to drive that sleigh. And in the book, once again, readers are encouraged to shout no every time the pigeon prompts to ask you a question about letting him drive the sleigh. But once he gets close to the sleigh, he smells something funny and he sees something brown and readers with their curious eyes notice a large nose on the right side of the spread. And when the kids turn the page, they realize, oh my gosh, it's a reindeer. And the pigeon gets scared. He is so scared of the reindeer that he decides, forget it. He says in big words, forget it. And he says, hey, Easter egg delivery, anyone? I thought that was super cute. Um, so at the end of the story, the pigeon then decides out of all of that to become the Easter bunny. And he dreams of being an Easter egg delivery bunny. Um, super cute, super funny. If you're looking for something to um, update your holiday story time picture books, grab Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Sleigh by Mo Willems. But I have some more coming up, so keep, keep your eyes peeled. Okay, we are gonna switch gears to second and third grade chapter books. This book is called Detective Tuck the case of the strange splash 
This is the first book in this series, and it's written by Henry Winkler, and it's written by Lynn Oliver, and illustrated by Dan Santat. And this is a story about willow feathers. And I wrote my notes. I This is my lovely book journal here. I write all my reviews in. But willow feathers is a duck, a duck that is raised by Beaver McBeaver. Say that twice fast, Beaver McBeaver. And they live on a dam in Dogwood Pond. As a young little baby, Willow's egg was blown away to Beaver's dam. And Willow loves to solve mysteries. She's curious about the world. She's curious about nature. And something happens when she finds a large black circular thing thrown in the pond. Well, that black circular thing is a tire. And Willow wants to know where this tire has come from and how do we get it back to its owner? So with her friends and with her stuff box, she keeps a stuff box with all of her um, things that she finds on the ground from humans. She's able to find who put the tire into the pond. So it's a short mystery for kids. There's black and white illustrations that the kids can view from Dan Santat. Um, this was just a fun, simple chapter book for second grades and third graders. Um, very funny, cute, quirky characters, um, but definitely pick up Detective Duck, this case of the strange splash. The next book in the second to third grade crowd is Jojo McCoon's Snow Day. It is written by Dawn Quigley, and it's illustrated by Tara Audibert. And if you're not familiar with the JoJo series, this is the third book in the series. JoJo is a spunky first grader. She's seven years old. She is part of the, she has Ojibwe descent. Her teacher at school has is teaching the kids about healthy habits. And JoJo just takes it upon herself to be very spunky and very independent. So when the, the class is learning about healthy habits, she really wants to encourage everyone in her neighborhood to be healthy. And it just so happens that the school has a snow day. So JoJo uses this opportunity to help everyone around her be healthy. So she checks on her elders. She has a grandmother who has... Uh, diabetes and making sure that she doesn't eat too much sugar. Um, but also on the snow day, which I find very funny, instead of eating cereal, she eats ice cream. So she's a very silly, funny young woman, young kiddo. And the cool thing about her is that on this snow day, she helps to organize a community-wide winter Ojibwe Olympics. So super fun. Uh, there's black and white illustrations. There's glossary, a glossary in the back of the book that helps uh, give different uh, definitions of some of the words in, in the story. Um, this would be good for second graders, but I love how it's more publishers are now moving to promote more Native American indigenous stories. And I'm happy to see that. So if you get a chance, pick up Jojo McCoon's Snow Day. Okay, moving on to early readers. We have Harry at the Dog Show. And this is based on the character created by Jean Zion and Margaret Bloy Graham. This story is written by Laura Driscoll and it's illustrated by Saba Joshagani. And Harry, our beloved Harry the dog, Harry gets loose from his kid handlers and he wants to see this dog show. He's super excited to see the dog show. So he decides to take it upon himself to get loose from his handler and run to this dog show. And the owners, organizers of the dog show, they don't know who this dog is. They just assume that Harry's part of the dog show. So he gets groomed like one of the dogs competing, um, but he doesn't like the heat from the hairdryer. Um, he jumps over fences like the other dogs competing, and he ends up winning first place in the dog show. Um, if you have kids that love dogs, this would be a light hot, lighthearted, cute romp for them to read, uh, perfect for kindergarten or first graders. So grab Harry at the dog show. 
This next book, I had to add this onto my list. Um, this is called Baking with Me Abuelita. Um, this is written and illustrated by Julissa Mora, and this received a starred review in School Library Journal. And I love this book for the fact of the community, just it promotes community, family, and togetherness. Um, in the story, this young girl wants to celebrate her papi's birthday. And so her abuelita says, great, let's make a cake. And abuelita loves to bake and she loves to make cakes. And for papi, his favorite cake is a tres leches cake, which tres leches means three milks cake. And I don't know if anybody has had a tres leches cake. Anybody? Anybody has tres leches cakes? They are amazing. They are layered cakes. They have, oh, Carol Daly has had, wonderful. They're layered cakes and they have a milk syrup. It's kind of like it's made out of sweetened condensed milk inside the cake. And then there's um, a layer of like frosting. And then on top, you can put cherries or strawberries on there, but it's just layered. So that's, it's a tres leches cake. Um, so the family puts together a tres leches cake and the abuelita says, part of being baking is measuring. And it's also being patient because, you know, cakes have to bake. And once they got the cake made, oh my goodness, the little girl, she accidentally, when she goes to put, put the cake in, onto the plate, the cake was still stuck to the pan. And so she starts to cry. And Abuelita says, don't worry, we'll fix it. And Abuelita fixes it by patching up the cake. Um, but I love it because it promotes working together and it's a special tradition. Um, and it's just beautiful. And it's perfect for Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, so definitely pick up Baking with, Baking with Me Abuelita by Julissa Mora. And our next book is Toe on the Go, The Mambo Rescue. This is written by Patricia Lakin and illustrated by Chiara Galetti. Now this is part of a series uh, and this is a delightful early beginning reader series and it features Mo the Tow Truck. So Mo, the yellow tow truck right here, Mo is driving along and he spots 10 cars and trucks in the snow. But wait, but in this story, what makes Mo unique is that he's listening to Mambo music to get the to get the cars out of the out of the snow. And I love it because in a way he's kind of towing them a bit. But then when he plays the mambo music, the cars and trucks are kind of like wiggling kind of left and right to the music and it helps them get out of the snow. And I thought it was super cute. Um, each spread has at least two sentences on a spread. So it's perfect for beginning readers. And yes, this is a rhyming book, Sam. This is a rhyming book and the rhymes are cute and simple. So give this to those who love trucks. If you have a truck enthusiast at your library, which I'm sure you do, make sure you grab the toe on the go, the Mambo Rescue. Okay, we are moving, switching gears to picture books and board book roundup. My first selection is called Remembering. This is written by Helena Gonzalez and illustrated by Adriana M. Garcia. This book received star reviews in Kirkus and Publishers Weekly. And I wanted to include this book because it talks about the customs of Dia de los Angelitos, which is one of the celebrations of Dia de los Muertos. And in this book, a child and their family have lost their beloved dog, Simon. Um, their dog passed away, and in honor of Dia de los Angelitos, they build a ofrenda, which is a memorial for the dog, to help lead the pet's soul home. They put out a bowl of Simon's favorite food, a bowl of water, along with a stone or a stick on the ofrenda, and the family shares stories and photos of their dog, Simon, and it helps the child process their grief and it's such a beautiful picture book. It's so il beautifully illustrated, um, but it shows that loved ones are never really gone when you take the time to remember them. 
this is a great offering. Um, if you have a Dia de los Muertos display or if you're celebrating, um, if you're having a celebration or an event at your library to promote Dia de los Muertos, um, in the back of the book, the author and the illustrator have a note and both of them lost pets um, during the time of the of putting together the book. Um, so when they both lost their pets, they found that putting this book together was a way of healing for themselves. Um, so definitely pick up Remembering. The next book on my list is called My Piano. This is written by Jen Fier Jasinski and illustrated by Anita Bagdi. This received a star review in School Library Journal. And in this story, a young girl shows off her piano before her recital. And it does, it is a rhyming book. And one of the verses says, this is my piano. Inside is the frame enclosed in this case that lies on these legs with wheels at the base to pillar and prop my piano. This book is told in the style of this is the house that Jack built. If you've read that picture book, you can tell the, the cadence and the and kind of the sing-songy type of pattern. Um, the, but this is a stunning picture book to look at. I love, I don't know if you see on the page, um, on the left side of your screen where she's playing the music and you see the word swell, ripple, and flow. I love the flow of music shown when she's playing playing on the piano. Um, the back of the book is awesome because it has definitions of all the piano parts that the little girl shows in the book. And it tells what each part does to make a piano work, um, such as dampers and tuning pins. I had no idea what a damper or a tuning pin was. And it has information on what to do to have the best piano recital ever, um, which they say practice, prepare, and perform. So this book for me is a bravo. So grab my piano. Okay. I saw this picture book and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get this on this list. Um, you guys know the eclipse is coming up. There's one in October and there's one in April. I think it's April 8th of 2024. Um, but this would be a perfect story time for an eclipse story time. This is called Eclipse, and it's written and illustrated by Andy Rash. This received a starred review on Publishers Weekly, and this is a book based on a trip the author took with his son to watch the solar eclipse in 2017. Um, they traveled from Wisconsin to Golconda, Illinois. Um, so after hearing about the solar eclipse happening at his school, at his school, because he heard it from his teachers, the young boy makes a plan with his father to go see the solar eclipse. Um, in that picture to your left, he draws a he draws a map of the United States outside on the, at the school playground, and the, the little boy and his father drive down to Illinois. They camp out. You see them with their camping gear, and they don't want to miss a thing, and so. They get to the site to see the eclipse and then they put on their glasses and they watch the eclipse. But I love the illustrations and I thought, man, what a timely book to put that out right before these two eclipse, um, eclipses. Um, and I put down the dates. The next eclipse is October 14th and the total eclipse is April 8th, 2024. This is a heartwarming and beautiful picture book. I just loved how the dad and the son were able to experience that one moment together, but this would be a great, great addition to an eclipse story time. So pick this up before the next eclipse. Hicks in the Sky. This is written and illustrated by C.G. Esperanza. And this received a starred review from Kirkus. And this is about these young children. They're in the city. And they see all of these colorful, psychedelic looking sneakers hanging up from telephone wires all over the city. And they're hanging up in the sky and they just are really cool to look at. But there's a couple pairs of sneakers that are knocked down 
and the kids try them on. And soon they're racing and they're dancing and they're flying. Um, and they think these sneakers are so cool, but they're kind of clueless as to where did they come from? And they ask, where did they come from? And who would leave behind a pair of shoes? And someone explains to them that, you know, these shoes were thrown on there, left on there to symbolize someone had passed. Um, but this is a beautiful picture book. It is gorgeously illustrated. Um, I just thought it was very vibrant, colorful, and just a celebration of, of life. So pick up Kicks in the Sky by C.G. Esperanza. In the last book on my picture book, board book list, this is a board book. This is called The ABCs of Baby's Needs, Essential Signs to Learn with Baby. And this is written and illustrated by Larice Laura. This received a starred review in School Library Journal. And this is a wonderful board book for learning ways to communicate with baby in um, using American Sign Language. There's A for all done, B for bath, C for cold. It goes through all 26 letters of the alphabet. And each image shows a baby performing the activity in the middle, the picture does. And then to the left of the picture, someone is signing the actual word. Um, so this would be a great resource for caregivers to teach the alphabet, um, the, the uh, sign language alphabet to their baby, but to also just teach out the alphabet. Um, so definitely pick up the ABCs of baby's needs. Okay, we are switching gears and we're gonna move to teen fiction. My first book on the list is called An Impossible Thing to Say. This is written by Arya Shah Shahi, excuse me. And this received a starred review in Booklist. This is a novel in verse about Omid. He's a Peruvian American who just met his newly immigrated grandfather from Iran. And right from the get go, Omid has trouble finding the right words to say. He doesn't know what to say to his grandfather. Hi, how are you? He's, he's just nervous. He just doesn't know what to say to him. But his grandfather knew that Omid loves to journal. He loves to write. And he gives him a leather bound journal and Omid uses that as a way to express himself. And he faces typical teenage issues. Um, he auditions for a play at school thanks to his honors class that gave him the courage. He also has a secret crush on a girl at his new prep school. Um, but there's other things that he's facing too. Um, he's, he's discovering secrets that his grandfather kept from, his fa from their family. And he's facing prejudice and community suspicion after the 9-11 terrorist attacks. The poetry written in this novel and verse is beautiful. This is just a good coming to age realistic fiction story. So definitely grab an impossible thing to say. The next book is A Study in Drowning. This is written by Ava Reed. And this received a starred review in Publishers Weekly. This is a kind of an enemies to lovers fantasy for teens. And if you have teens that like dark academic academia, excuse me, this will be a great addition for your collection. This is about a young girl named Effie, who's an aspiring architect. She has entered a contest to redesign her favorite author's estate. And the favorite author that she likes is Emrys Mirden. She's a big fan of their work. And when she arrives at the manor, she meets the handsome Preston, who's also a young literature scholar. But they're really reluctant to work together, but they have to in this case, because they're noticing strange happenings that are occurring inside and outside the late author's estate. And there's some dark forces, both mortal and magical, that are threatening both of them. So it's kind of an enemies to lovers story. There's suspense, there's fantasy. This fits all, all the fields if you have teens that are interested in dark academia. My next book is All the Fighting Parts. 
This is written by Hannah F. Sawyer, and this received starred reviews in Kirkus and School Library Journal. This is another novel in verse, and this is about Amina. Amina is 16 years old. She has parents who are from Sierra Leone, and she has a lot going on for her. She's going to a prep school. She has friends. She has a boyfriend that she really likes, and she has no trouble using her voice at all, especially when one of the, her classmates just starts to act stupid to her. She tells him off, and the teacher is not thrilled about this, so she calls her. Amina's dad, and Amina's not thrilled about her behavior and her telling someone off. So he decides to send her to Pastor Johnson, who has a camp for for young for young teens, and he's been working with young teens. And Amina's not thrilled about this at all. She's just not thrilled. And what happens is Amina is sexually assaulted and raped by her pastor. After this happens, her life starts to unravel. Her father is frustrated that her grades are slipping. Her best friend doesn't know what's going on. Her boyfriend doesn't understand why the once loud and proud girl is now quiet and distant. Um, Amina just feels alone and she's scared. And the bad thing about this situation is, is that Pastor Johnson is well-known in the community. Everybody respects him and he's everyone's favorite community leader. But Pastor Johnson is arrested for a different crime and the community is just really shaken and divided. Some people call him a monster and others defend him. But Amina realizes she's relieved that she doesn't have to speak because Pastor Johnson can't hurt anyone, she thinks but that's not the case. So now she has to go testify in court against him. This was a powerful book. Um, there were times where it was hard for me to read it and I had to put it down because uh, you you just feel for this girl. You feel for her, you understand her anger and the poetry is spot on. Uh, I was just moved by this book and reading more about Hannah Sawyer, she is also a survivor of sexual assault because she, while writing this book, she had to go to court to face her own abuser. Um, very powerful story. Uh, I would pair this with Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson because that has kind of similar, um, similar topics. But this is a powerful read. It's a compelling read. Definitely pick up all the fighting parts. Next book is What Stalks Among Us. This is a horror novel and it's written by Sarah Howell. And this received starred reviews in Publishers Weekly. And this is about two seniors, Sadie and Logan. They, they just don't wanna go to school. They, they wanna ditch this AP class that they're supposed to go to. They're supposed to go on a field trip and they're like, skip this field trip. We're gonna go play hooky. So they ditch their class and instead they go exploring old forgotten back roads. But the last thing they expect to come across is a giant abandoned corn maze. But you know what? Hey, we're going to play hooky. We're going to have some fun and we're just going to go through this maze and, you know, we're, we'll get out of it. No problem. Wrong. <laughs> they try a second time and a third time to get out of this maze, even a fourth time. And Sadie and Logan are realizing that this maze is not just any type of fun Halloween maze. They keep entering the same parts of it again and again and again. And what makes it more creepy is that they stumble on onto corpses in the maze and they know those corpses and they realize they've not only entered this maze before, but they've died in it. <laughs> and no matter what they try to do, they cannot figure out who or what is haunting them. This to me is horror gold. It's spooky, but not too spooky for teens. I would definitely pair this book with my other favorite teen horror book, Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Cesar. It's these just scream teen horror slasher genre books for me. 
Um, so if you like something spooky, if you want something spooky for Halloween to recommend to teens, give them What Stalks Among Us by Sarah Hollowell. Okay, we are gonna move on to middle grade books. And I have two books in store for you today. The first one is Scare Waves. This is written by Trevor Henderson. And this is a middle grade horror story about Beacon Point. The word, if you go to this town in Beacon Point, is that you don't stay outside after dark. If you go to Beacon Point, disappearances are common. You have strange creatures that have been sighted on the regular. And there's a ghastly, creepy figure in that long coat and dark hat that appears when you least expect it. So this book has several characters. I, I think I stopped counting after five because there were so many characters in this book. But the main ones, Mary and Lucas, they are teaming up to find out why these kids are going missing. This was just creepy good fun. Um, if you've never heard of Trevor Henderson, or if you have, um, Trevor is both a horror illustrator and artist, and he's known for creepy pastas. If you follow, if you read a lot of creepy pastas, um, but this is a very dark and creepy middle grade novel, and he's added black and white illustrations to match. I would not read this at night because it was kind of creepy. Um, so definitely pick up Trevor Henderson's Scare Waves. My next book is called Gone Wolf, and this is written by Amber McBride. And this is a science fiction kind of futuristic middle grade novel that bounces back and forth between the present and the future. So in the year 2111, you have clones that are pale skinned that are ruling society. And you have black children who are known as blues. Those kids are kept separate from society. And there you meet Eleven. Eleven is a tween. She's an inmate and she's being confined and she's being used to be a biological match for the president's son if he falls sick. Um, she is called the, the color blue because it's the color of sadness. She lives in a very tiny room with her dog who is going wolf. And more often he's pacing and imagining being free. Eleven wants to be free too, but she wants to know why she feels so blue and what is beyond her small, tiny room. And then you, you travel back to 2022, where readers meet Emojin, who lives outside of Washington, Washington, D.C. Um, the pandemic is happening and it's distanced her from everyone but her mother and her therapist. Um, Imogen has intense phobias. She has nightmares of confinement. Her two other older brothers used to help her, but now she's on her own. And this is just an empowering, powerful read of racism, class, and grief, uh, especially from the tween perspective. Um, so definitely pick up Gone Wolf by Amber McBride. Okay. We are moving on to children and teen nonfiction. The first book is a teen nonfiction selection, and this is called Accountable, the true story of a racist social media account and the teenagers whose lives it changed. This is written by Dashka Slater, and this received star reviews in School Library Journal and the Bulletin of the Center for Children's Books. And this is a nonfiction account that deals with social media and school districts. So in 2017, uh, racial, a racist social media account was outed in a small school district in Albany, California. Um, it was followed by a handful of students and it targeted black girls in the school and posted, it posted race-based memes for what was described as quote, edgy humor, unquote. There was a multi-year interrogation and there was lots of prejudice um, and there, it felt it dealt with the school's response and how it, how they responded to it. And it ended up with ed, education in the courts. So this book has um, the 
court documents. It has the statistics, testimony of people involved. Um, and that's all in the back part of the book. Um, but it is really, really an honest account of just free speech versus hate speech. Um, so definitely pick up Accountable by Dashka Slater. The next book on my list is called Period, The Quick Guide to Every Uterus. This is written by Ruth Redford and illustrated by Atiana Giraldez. This is a really cool, positive period book. Um, and it's produced by the Mayo Clinic. I was able to look at this at a, I got an advanced reader copy, but it talks about info on periods, how they start, um, puberty, putting together a period pack, which I wish I would have known that when I was a young girl. Um, it talks about period pads, menstrual cups, tampons, everything a young girl and caregiver need to know about periods. There's eight chapters in this title. There's a glossary section in the back. And I really liked that the authors, the author really added a tips and tips and FAQ for parents, especially how to handle cramps, because I don't know about you, but cramps suck. They're awful. Um, but I just loved how they took such a topic and made it positive through the illustrations to make it feel like, yes, it's okay to have your period. Yes, you will get through this. Yes, cramps suck, but yes, you there's ways to combat that. Um, so if you're needing something to update your menstrual health section, grab period. Okay, now we are gonna switch gears for our holiday book roundup. And boy, is it a doozy. I've got four really, really cool picture books on here. If you are needing to spruce up your holiday section, um, I'm gonna start with the top left corner. The first book is called Red and Green. And it's illustrated by, or excuse me, written and created by Lois Ehlert. And if you know Lois Ehlert, she has a lot of die cuts. And this book is no, no exception. And it starts with, it was a cold wintry night and all through the house, not a creature was stirring except a small mouse. So this mouse is running all over the house and the mouse sees wet stockings hung up and he sees a snow and snowman, which is which all, everything is made out of die cuts. And he's nibbling on Santa's cookies, which Santa gets mad. And he's like, hey, who ate my treat? Um, this was a cute take on the night before Christmas. And a very colorful, very sweet, very simple uh, picture book. So there's red and green. The next book down below, or actually to your right, is called How Does Santa Go Down the Chimney? To me, this is a classic. I read this book and I, I literally wrote in my notes, laugh out loud funny. Um, this is written by Mac Barnett and illustrated by John Klassen. And this received starred reviews in Kirkus, School Library Journal, and Booklist. So Mac asks readers, how does Santa fit down the chimney? Does he cinch up his waist? What if there's no chimney? If his outfit is dirty, does Santa use the washer and dryer in the house to wash it? So all of these laugh out loud questions, they are pondered by readers because they have to ask themselves, how does Santa really get down the chimney? Um, does he use night vision goggles? He shows him with go the goggles. Or does he use heat vision goggles? Should you leave carrots instead of cookies for Santa? There's a funny image where Santa's trying to get down the chimney on the on top of the roof. And if you peer to the left of the page, you see the reindeer just sitting and one of them's holding a mug of coffee. <laughs> I thought that was super cute. Um, but it, this is an instant classic. Hands down, you need to grab this book. The next book, A Creature Was Stirring, um, that's written by Heather S. Pierzynski and illustrated by Skylar Hogan. Again, another fun take on the night before Christmas. Um, only you, this little mouse is the one that's stirring because you know in the original book, not a creature was stirring, it's not even a mouse, but this mouse is stirring. So all the animals in this story are sleeping except mouse. He's excited for Christmas. He can't go to sleep. 
He's so excited that he's sliding on the little toy sled. He's singing Christmas carols with the toy soldiers. That is until he sees Santa. And Santa tells the curious mouse to please go to sleep. <laughs> this is a cute picture book with warm and cozy illustrations and it's just adorable. And then at the very bottom, um, that one, this book is called La Noche Before Three Kings Day, written by Sheila Colon Bagley and illustrated by Alejandro Mesa. Again, it's another take on Nightmare, or sorry, Nightmare Before Christmas. It's another take of The Night Before Christmas, and it celebrates the Latin American holiday, El Dia de los Reyes, which is Spanish for Three Kings Day. Now, Three Kings Day is celebrated January 6th, in Spain, Europe, and uh, Latin America. So there's a Puerto Rican family and, and they're preparing for the holiday. And how they prepare is they have food, they have music, they have a party, and they decorate little shoe boxes. And they leave the shoe boxes out at night. So that way, instead of Santa coming to see them, the three kings come and visit each house. And the three kings come, they come to visit the house on these camp, on these floating camels, and they bring gifts. They bring dulces, they bring uh, candies, monedas, and um, which is money, munecas, dolls, and caritos, little toy cars. This is a great bilingual addition to your holiday section because um, it mixes the Spanish and English words. And there is a glossary of Spanish words included in the back of the book. So definitely you want to add all these four books to your collection. Total hits. All right, switching gears now. We are going to graphic novels and manga. My first book is called Cat on the Run in the Cat of Death. This is written by Aaron Blabby and illustrated by him. If you know that name, Aaron Blabby, he is the author of the Bad Guy series. And this is a brand new series. It's about a young cat named Princess. Princess is a popular internet cat sensation with tons of followers, thanks to her hilarious cat videos. She's a, also a cat diva. She throws vanilla lattes in her sister's face. She demands things and she's just a diva. So when she films her next video, there's a group that's only known with a Scorpion logo. They deliberately send her the launch codes for nuclear weapons, and now she becomes a target. The cute bow, Catch a Cash, he, th this is a cat also, and he knows that she's innocent. Um, but it's super funny, super, super zany. Um, if you like wild illustrations and zany situations, just like the bad guys, this will be another hit for your library. Grab Cat on the Run and Cat of Death. This is called Things in the Basement. This is written and illustrated by Ben Hackey. And this received starred re reviews in School Library Journal, Booklist, and Publishers Weekly. This is a really cool uh, graphic novel. This is about Milo. Milo, his mother, and their twin siblings have recently moved into a new home. And one of the babies has lost her pink sock. So Milo's mom asks Milo to find the pink sock. Only the sock is in the basement. And let's face it, did anybody else have a basement that was dark and scary at their house? I know I did. And as a young kid, you don't wanna go down in the basement. But Milo has to, so he goes down into the basement to find the sock. And what he finds are monsters, he finds creatures, he finds new tunnels and paths within this house. I really liked this book because it tackled themes of courage um, and just being, being brave. Because, you know, there's a lot of kids who just don't like the dark and they don't like basements. Um, so it was just really cool how it took this young little boy onto new paths within the house. Um, so definitely pick up things in the basement. This is a teen graphic novel, and this is called The Infinity Particle. And this is written and illustrated by Wendy Zhu, and this received a starred review in Booklist. 
And this is about a young woman named Clementine Chang. Clementine is a teenager and she's moved from Earth to Mars for a new start. And she's lucky enough that she has landed her dream job in robotics. And she gets to work with her idol, which is Dr. Marcella Lin. Um, she, Marcella is an artificial intelligence pioneer. So she's really led the way. Um, on her first day on the job, Clementine meets Dr. Lin's assistant. And the assistant is a humanoid, um, part, part of artificial intelligence. And his name is Kai. Um, and Clem loves robots. She loves building them. Um, she also built herself a little moth-shaped uh, companion named Cena. So she's no stranger to creating robots. But once she meets Kai, she realizes there's something kind of human about him. And he's kind of cute. And when Clem and Clementine and Kai, they begin to collaborate, the chemistry really sets off. Um, the only thing with Kai is that Dr. Lin, his creator, is not what she seems. She's evil. She treats Kai like crap. And Kai really wants to be independent. He wants to think for himself. He wants to be his own person. So Clementine learns this and she she is determined to help him be free of Dr. Lin's control. Um, so this really had different, it had different themes of breaking free, what it means to think for yourself and be independent, what it means to be human. Um, I love the illustrations because it had the, kind of like that manga-like style and feel in it. Um, and it was just a sweet, sweet romance. And especially in science fiction, you can't beat it. So grab the infinity particle. Okay, we got 11 minutes left. Now to tell you about what I'm reading and what I've picked up. I went to the library yesterday and I got these bad boys. Um, the first book on my list is How to Find a Missing Girl. This is a teen mystery, LGBTQ, LGBTQ non-binary mystery by Victoria Vlos Vlosic, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I just got this book yesterday, but it's about a high school senior named Iris, and she has a big problem. Her ex-girlfriend went missing a year ago. Now her sister has vanished, and Iris doesn't know what to do, but she loves true crime. She's a true crime podcaster in small town Louisiana. So what she's decided to do is use her amateur sleuthing skills to solve what happened to these two girls. But at the same time, there's a suspicious detective that is watching her every move. Um, so I'm really curious to see how this plays out. The middle book, if of course, I'm a big fan of Stephen King. I've read Stephen King since I was in sixth grade. Um, this is Holly by Stephen King. Um, I am excited to read this book because Holly, I don't know if you've read the Mr. Mercedes trilogy. It was a great trilogy. I read that. I read The Outsider. Um, Holly is part of the Mercedes trilogy. She's striking out on her own as a private investigator. And she has been asked to to solve this mystery of a young girl disappearing. But here's the kicker. The people that are the per, the people that are the cause of all these disappearances are the, this elderly couple, this elderly acad, couple who are in academics, and they are keeping people downstairs in their basement in cages. Is that messed up or what? I was like, oh my god! I, I was blown away when Stephen King had mentioned that in a in a uh, CBS's Saturday Morning. And I was like, oh my God, he got the idea for this book after reading a newspaper article with the headline, they seemed like a lovely, nice old couple until the body started appearing in the backyard. That to him was a story and I can't wait. I started it last night. It has all the creepy feels and I am for it. Um, so grab Holly, when you if you get a chance, grab it and read it. The next book on my list is Club Kickout, Into the Ring. This is a first book in the series. This is a middle grade novel 
and it's written and illustrated by Steph Mited. And this is a funny story about a young girl named Sasha. She's bummed out that her gaming club got permanently canceled at their school, um, but she's not alone. It turns out the theater department, the cosplay club, and the choir clubs are also canceled at their school too. So you have a ton of kids that are left without a space to let their creativity flow. Um, and so just when she thinks there's nothing really for me to do, Sasha and a group of kids, they find something that they've never seen before. They find a local wrestling match and they see these wrestlers use costumes and secret identities and catchphrases to be who they are. And so together, all these kids, they form Club Kickout, but some people aren't thrilled with them being wrestlers. So I'm real excited to see how this plays out because it has manga-like illustrations as well. And so we have an upcoming event, Wednesday, October 18th. If you are not doing anything, Join us from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock p.m. for Pop YS Live. We are going to pre premiere the I Read Summer 2024 preview. The theme this year for summer reading is Read, Renew, Repeat. We will have representatives from I Read to talk about the theme, um, the manual itself, and answer any questions that you may have. And they're also, we'll talk about the 2025 theme as well. So please join us if you can. Make sure you register on Iowa Learns for that wonderful event. And it looks like Sam's got the registration up as well. And as always, we do have a giveaway. And I got to tell you, I got some really good prizes this time around. I contacted Scholastic and they sent me a copy of Cat on the Run by Aaron Blabby. Not only did they send me that, they sent me um, bad guy uh, sunglasses and they sent me a cool little uh, poster that's kind of like an activity pack. So three winners will receive a book, a checkout prize book pack with some of those activities in there. Um, the packs will be sent via Iowa Shares. And also congratulations to Amy McGraw of Independence Public Library, Keisha Henry from Plainfield Public Library, and Christy Allison from Algona Public Library. These three winners were our August winners. So congratulations to you all. And I just wanna say thank you so much for joining us for Check It Out. We will return on Tuesday, October 24th from 11 a.m. to noon. So be there or be square. Sam, did I miss anything? Sounds great to me. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, thanks to Janae for these uh, great books. So much to read and think about. So everyone enjoy the rest of your day and um, have a great rest of your week. Take care. Thanks, guys.